right out of the gate, Mike Leach, how was the fit in the SEC from a passing standpoint? KJ Costello and company rip up the Tigers for 623 yards and win in Death Valley in an upset. And then it all comes crashing down after that. So what in the world happened there regards to um, Mike Leach's uh, approach, the passing game and its effectiveness in the SEC? Well, I think it was a combination of a few factors, one of which we didn't know until later on in the season. I think the first factor was LSU's defense really wasn't that great, and that was proven as the year went on. Um, and secondly, it goes it goes more along with LSU as well. I think they were just running the wrong defensive scheme uh, against Mike Leach's offense, and this was proven as the year went on. You want to run sort of a zone scheme, maybe rush three, drop eight, whereas LSU was basically running man the entire time. And it caused Mississippi State's wide receivers to run right past their DBs for easy completions and easy touchdowns at many times. Um, and, you know, LSU, they were the first team on the schedule, so they heard, they learned the hard way. They were the first victim of the, of the Mike Leach air raid. Um, but as the season went on, the SEC defenses started to catch on and it was proven the next week, you know, you have Mississippi state, as you mentioned, scoring 44 and throwing for 623 yards in LSU. And the next week state can barely have a pulse on offense, only scoring 14 against Arkansas. And that's because they were going against a really good defensive coordinator in Barry Odom, um, and a feisty group who ended up, uh, even though went only winning three games, exceeding many people's expectations, including mine. Um, and then from, from then on out against Kentucky, against Texas A&M, against Alabama, Mississippi State's offense was stifled because the defenses were running the, that same defensive scheme. The zone rush three, drop eight. It caused Mississippi State's offense to hit a bit of a stalemate. Um, but also Mississippi State's team as a whole, looking past just an offensive scheme, was sort of in a bit of turmoil. I think that there were some players, you know, when you look at Mike Leach, first of all, you know, he's a coach arguably the most stubborn coach in college football you know he wants things run his way and if you don't have if you don't if you don't do things his way he doesn't want you and that was proven throughout the season as there were tons and tons and tons of opt-outs and players entering the transfer portal i mean mississippi state's best offensive weapon kylan hill opted out um in the middle of the season and you know i don't I'm not there. I'm not within the program. I don't know Mike Leach. I don't know the players, so I can't say this for certain, but it seems like some of the players who didn't fully buy into Mike Leach, once they left, and despite the fact it was a very patchwork small group, once you had that small group of players who truly wanted to buy into Mike Leach, the team started to play well because you have an offensive, you have a three game stretch in which state cannot move the ball against Arkansas, Texas, or a four-game stretch, Arkansas, Texas A&M, Kentucky, and Alabama. And then you nearly go to Athens and beat Georgia. You nearly beat Ole Miss. You have a bit of a lull against Auburn, but then you put 51 on Missouri, who Missouri was another team in the SEC who exceeded many people's expectations, ended up winning five games. So, you know, I think the um, I think that mid-season lull that the offense had was a combination of opposing teams defenses sort of figuring out what to do and also maybe there were just a bunch of guys who maybe didn't fully buy into what Mike Leach wanted and once that pack was gone Mike Leach sort of found his guys to build for the future yeah he's a strong personality and he does things a certain way and he's one of those guys um I'm trying to think across the country, maybe PJ Fleck is not like Mike Leach. I'm not making that comparison, but just in regards to you're, you're, you're buying the whole package. You're, you're mm -hmm. getting a personality. You're getting a strong personality. You're getting a certain way. And if you're going to be all in, you better be all in. If you hire that guy, uh, Mike Leach's tenure at Texas tech didn't start out extremely well. And then it turned out to where he finished, uh, in the top 25, five of his last six years there, which thinks it seems unthinkable at this point at Texas tech. They're nowhere mm -hmm. close to that. Haven't been since uh, at Washington State. He had a three and nine season his first year, and then uh, they reached some heights that they had rarely reached uh, in the past as well. So we will see. It certainly didn't look good, and especially it was just a bit curious. Uh, and I, I appreciate the explanation, but from miles away, a bit curious in that they come out big debut. 
And then if you would if you would think, okay, Mike Leach and Mississippi State are going to struggle. Oh, they're losing games 52-45 all season, and that's what it's going to be. But to see that offense average about five points per game over a four or five game stretch was pretty alarming. And like you mm -hmm. say, uh, they hit their stride and perform much better down the stretch with uh, Will Rogers at quarterback. The fit in the SEC, we hit on it from a passing game standpoint within the conference on the field. But culturally, in terms of Mississippi State and the Bulldog fan base uh, embracing Mike Leach, uh, you know, putting up with his um, what what the show becomes when you get Mike Leach. Uh, again, when he was hired, I, I thought that to be a curious fit. That doesn't mean it can't work. Uh, and certainly his past record has proven that he's uh, made it work at, at different stops. And especially considering the same year you get a big splash hire at your rival school with Lane Kiffin coming to Ole Miss, it, it uh, makes for an interesting dynamic. Yeah, and I was about to go back to that initial point. You mentioned Lane Kiffin going to Ole Miss. You know, when State fired Joe Moorhead, from a national perspective, it was people were confused. And I actually spoke to someone who was a Missouri writer before the State Missouri game, and he just straight up asked me, "Why did State fire Joe Moorhead?" And from because from an external perspective, he goes fourteen and twelve, goes to two bowl games, wins the Egg Bowl twice at Mississippi State. What's the big deal? Well, it was just the big deal. To put it simply, was a dramatic a noticeable drop off from Dan Mullen to Joe Moorhead in just a season. It was a dramatic drop off in terms of quality of play, in terms of discipline. And there were some not only on the field, but some off the field issues. So I think Mississippi State realized that this isn't probably just based off of the first two years. I don't, we don't think this is going to get better. We might as well delay the inevitable and get rid of Joe Moorhead now. So if you get rid of a coach who's been to two bowl games in two years, and has a winning record in those two years, what does state have to do? Well, they have to hire someone who is a proven winner. And that's what Mike Leach was. Now, Mike Leach was not initially a candidate for the state job. Uh, initially, Billy Napier was a hot name. Um, then Steve Sarkeesian was a hot name. Todd Grantham was in there. State had interviewed uh, Todd Monken um, uh, or Jeff Monken. I don't I, which one of whichever one is the monk and brothers is at army. Um, but so what did state have to do? They had when they went and interviewed Mike Leach sort of just as a, you know, we might as well. And Leach had interest. So, you know, state decided to hire Leach. And at the time it was a, you know, Mississippi state fans were absolutely fired up. Um, you know, this is a guy who had been to 16 bowl games in 18 years at, small schools who had not had that success before and really since obviously it's to be determined in washington state but in texas tech's situation they haven't had the same success since and so mississippi state in the s the sec pecking order was a very similar circumstance um so you know i think mississippi state fans didn't really care about what mike leach you know about his off the field antics as long as he won and he was a proven winner so, you know, I think the fit there, at least from a fan perspective, was a good one. Um, now, as the team had struggled, there were some questions because Mississippi State is a team who is very acclimated to running the ball. And all of a sudden, when you have a coach who throws the ball as many times as he does, there's going to be some angst in the fan base and amongst the Mississippi State supporters but which there were, especially since the team was losing and the offense was struggling. But regardless, I think a major, a vast majority of the fan base and those who support state, um, I think they all realize that this is a coach who is a proven winner. And at both of his previous stops, as you alluded to earlier, it takes time for it to get going. So I think from a culture standpoint, from a fit standpoint, it might be kind of odd, but at least from looking at it in internally inside the Mississippi State uh, program and with the fan base and supporters and whatnot, uh, I think it's a situation where they're all still on board despite the struggles of this season. As you mentioned, Daniel, it all comes down to winning in terms of the perception, mostly unless you're in trouble with the NCAA or something like that. And if you've got a Mike Leach and you're winning, he's his own man, he's funny, he's 
this, he's that. Uh, if he's not winning, he's quirky, he's aloof, he's a jerk. Uh, if, if the passing game is working and you're winning, it's innovative, it's creative, it's ahead of the curve, it's what we need to do. It's exciting, it's fun. If it's not working, we don't have a tough team. We got a flag football team. This is not the SEC. This is not SEC kind of football. We need to toughen up and run the ball. Uh, so mm -hmm. it all comes down to obviously success versus uh, a lack of success. And and uh, for Mississippi State fans out there, again, that want some hope, look at Washington State, look at Texas Tech when Mike Leach first took over versus what he accomplished during the uh, very quickly after he got there and for the rest of his tenure in both stops.